And the poll does show that women have partly driven some of this result in your poll. The gender gap is a big issue in this election, isn't it? It is a big gap, and and I'd, I'd point you additionally to the the margin that Kamala Harris wins older women with. It's a two to one margin among women age 65 and over. And so there's obviously something going on here. Older people is who you want to appeal to because they're the most reliable voters. And Kamala Harris is doing very well with that group. And what did this poll tell you about independent voters in Iowa? Right. And independents in Iowa do sort of switch back and forth in this poll, they're solidly, solidly behind Kamala Harris. And uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr., he was still uh, on the ballot in Iowa, wasn't he? He is still on the ballot, so we still test him. And he's, I think, now at three percentage points. And there are, so there's a, a few percentage points in, in play. You'll note that neither of the major candidates gets to 50%. So there's still a little squishiness in what could actually happen come Tuesday. There's still some squishiness. <laughs> there's some squishiness. Really? You mean Kamala Harris is not? Solidly winning? You are being gaslit. This is a psyop. This is being done to demoralize you. So that when you see, oh my God, you mean Kamala Harris is, is taking Iowa? Oh my God, why do I even go vote? That's the game they're playing. And, 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 and hold on a second. This is from the New York Post. New York Times chief political analyst explains why polls could be underestimating Trump again. Again. They underestimated Trump again. And he tells you why. You got to listen to this. The New York Times chief political analyst warned Sunday that pollsters may not have solved the underlying issues that in, they encountered in 2016 and 2020 and could once again be underestimating Donald Trump. Times scribe Nate Cohen, while cautioning on X that he has, quote, no idea whether our polls or any polls are right explained that inescapable survey bias may be spoiling the results because Democrats dramatically outpace white Republicans, a Trump voting bastion when it comes to answering pollsters. And you mean to tell me this is a Trump voting bastion, a bastion of Trump supporters, you gotta be kidding me. Shouldn't he be outpacing her? Mm, not necessarily. Quote, four years ago, the polls were thought to underestimate Mr. Trump because of non-response bias. Non-response, they have not figured out Trump supporters. They have yet to figure us out. None of us even, they, they, they don't try. They're trying to look, it's, you know what it's like? You're trying desperately to get to know, um, I don't know, think of a, a, a great basketball, Michael Jordan. You're trying desperately to get to know him. And so you read every single news article. All you're doing is you're just learning about him. You're not learning from him. I could say that I knew Kobe Bryant. I read all the articles, but I don't know Kobe Bryant. See, that's what they're doing. They want to tell you, we know Trump supporters. No, you don't. Just because you read an article doesn't mean you know us. And they don't. They, they still can't figure out why in the world are black people voting for this Nazi? It's, it's, they're, it's, <laughs> they still haven't figured it out. And, and, and so that's what you got to take away. You are being gaslit. This is meant to demoralize you. It is meant to make you think, <laughs> why did I even go to the polls? I might as well just stay home. 
Cohen 36, one of the foremost election data gurus, stressed it is difficult to track non-response bias, but noted that he likes to review the level at which Democrats and Republicans respond to pollsters and try to gain insights. He hasn't gained any insight. Quote, Across these final polls, white Democrats were 16% likelier to respond than white Republicans. He said, quote, it raises the possibility that the polls could underestimate Mr. Trump yet again. We do a lot to account for this, but in the end, there are no guarantees. Cohen also warned that Democrats appear to be suffering from a, quote, diminished, close quote, typical early voting edge, which could help Republicans on election day tomorrow. Did you vote yet? Go vote. Stop the video, pause the video, go vote, and then come back, all right? We need you to vote. And I don't care where you are. If you're deep, deep, deep in blue, I do not care. Go cast your vote. Now, this is what I need to show you. Because I think that this is kind of tells the tale. This is Iowa. Now take a look at this. All the way down to 2000. Look, Democrats won, but slightly. 48.5 to 48.2. 2004. 2004. Look at this. Democrats lost but really, really slight. Look at 2008, 53.9, wow, to 44.4. Wow, there was a big swing. 2008, wow, who was that? Oh, that's Barack Hussein, wow. They, and, and hold on a second, 2012, look at that again, another comfortable margin. And then we get to 2016 and lo and behold they're no longer falling for the banana in the tailpipe uh oh all of these same people flipped and voted for Donald Trump instead of Hillary Clinton which would have which would have been you know Barack Hussein Obama 2.0 they understood we were betrayed See, when you look at this, you can see people that live in Iowa are probably more in tune with the results of your being in office and not the color of your skin. <laughs> yes, because in 2020, look again, Trump won. And so... To believe these pollsters, you would have to believe that Iowa, out of all the states in this wonderful country of ours, Iowa is doing really, really well. They weren't affected at all by, I don't know, inflation. They, the, the bank, bacon never go up. They, 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 they got plenty of eggs. There's so many eggs, it's lowering the price. These are a group, this is a group of people who are focused on results. Results. So, so this is what this, I this is what you need to know. Okay. My guess is Donald Trump is doing really well in Iowa. That's my I'm I, and I'm only saying that because I'm looking at this. What's on your screen right now? I'm looking at this. They abandoned the Democrats went to the outsider, Donald Trump, and he's won Iowa. And why do you think that is? Now, to the polls. I, oh, I'm gonna get myself Please. in trouble, but, so I really don't believe too much in him. So well, 2016 taught a lot of people about the ineffective. Well, they were very ineffective because yeah. I thought I was doing well. I'd go to a place and I'd have 30, 40,000 people. Hillary would go, they have 500 people, and they tell me I'm going to lose. I said, why am I going to lose? I had 40,000 people. She had 200 people. 
But, you know, I have a theory. These pollsters, they charge you a lot of money, too. You know, they charge you half a million bucks to do some stupid poll, and they interview like 251 people. I don't think they interview them in many cases. I don't want to get myself in too much trouble. You think it's bullshit? No, I think they sit there. They make a deal. They get a half a million bucks, and they say, <laughs> Trump's leading 51 to 49. They announce it, and everybody says, oh, oh. do you understand? I, yeah. really don't, I, so don't, I don't think they – I think in a lot – look – I'm a very common sense person. I think that they probably don't always poll. Some of them probably never poll. Uh, what's the difference between 49 to 51 and 47 and a half? Well, it's also a tiny percentage of the population. I don't think it's representative of the overall population. I just don't think I don't it know is. of one person in my whole life that ever got called by a pollster. Exactly. That's exactly. He doesn't know anyone in his life that's ever been polled, that, that ever been called to do the poll, to, 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 to do the survey. <laughs> How many times have you been called to do the survey? And by the way, when you do, would you even answer the call? With, with, with Trump supporters, it's like they're like, uh, <laughs> now Donald Trump just let the cat out of the bag is that how would you let out what do you who do you let out of the bag the cat is out of the bag whatever you pay him half a million dollars to do a poll what do you think they're going to come back with what do you think they're going to come back with you approach a pollster hey i want you to do a poll you say okay sure and you are, I am a strong Democrat and we need you to do a poll. Well, what kind of results do you think they're going to come back with? They just paid you half a million dollars. Now, I'm not saying that they all do that, but that that's why there are internal polls and public polls. What I would like to know is what do their internal polls tell them about Trump in Iowa. I did the, the entire point of this piece is to go vote now. The point of this video is to go vote now. I don't care if you're in deep, deep blue. I do not care. Go vote. It needs to be overwhelming. It needs to be just insurmountable. It has to be too big to rig. So do not let them gaslight you in the belief, well, she's, she's really doing well. Just ask yourself, ask yourself a very, very simple question. Has she done anything in the last week that would give her this push over the finish line? Did she have some sort of brilliant interview with someone? Did, did, did she have some sort of fantastical real, uh, rally? Did did she bring out all, all of these, oh, I don't know, brand new voters? I mean, wh what has she done for the last two weeks that would give her this push? Zero. She's done zero. Zippo. Zilch. You are being gaslit. This is a psyop to make you stay home and energize their base. All right, that's it for now. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe. And if you're following me on Rumble, please press that follow button. And until the next time, go vote. God bless.